Welcome to the unit Weaving Techniques. This unit introduces skills needed for weaving. Students will learn weaving techniques through a combination of textual content, drawings and video demonstrations. This unit comprises of three modules and a final review section that invites you to reflect on what you have learned. By the end of this unit, students will be able to identify the materials and tools required for weaving, describe basic weaves and describe weaving techniques. The first module will give you an overview of the development of weaving and the different materials and tools used in weaving. Weaving is one of the most primitive methods of fabric construction. In its simplest form, weaving is done by the interlacement of two distinct and separate sets of threads perpendicular to each other. The longitudinal threads are called the warp and the lateral threads are the weft or filling. Weft or woof is an old English word meaning that which is woven. It is likely that ancient people might have realized the possibilities of the woven structure after observing spiders webs birds' nests and the construction of a beaver's dam. These findings probably led to the interlacing of twigs or vines and resulted in netting which surely assisted humans in catching fish and trapping game. Eventually, people used weaving skills to make exterior coverings for shelters to protect them from harsh weather and from predators. Archaeologists believe that basket making and weaving were probably the first crafts developed by humans. Once primitive people learned ways of creating a woven structure, the possibilities were endless. Netting, coverings for huts, containers for goods, carriers for the young, rugs, blankets, hammocks, pouches and body coverings. The actual origin of weaving is obscure. However, ancient Greek, Egyptian records and Indus Valley excavations bear evidence of the art and craft of weaving in these ancient civilizations. The weaving loom is a frame which is used to hold the vertical set of threads namely warp, taut and parallel while the weft is inserted backwards and forwards between the warp threads. There are three important types of looms, the backstrap loom, the horizontal loom and the treadle loom. The simplest looms are the backstrap or body tension looms. Early weaving was also done on vertical looms with a warp suspended from an upper bar weighted at the bottom. Another type of loom is a horizontal loom which has been the most highly developed in course of human history. The most commonly used looms for hand weaving is the treadle loom which has remained unchanged from its earliest models. Despite its early origins, the principle of hand weaving remains unchanged even with the introduction of power looms and auxiliary machinery in this craft. Weaving involves three basic operations, shedding, picking, and beating. Shedding can be described as a lifting of warp threads to form a shed, a triangular space between the warp threads that are lifted up and those that remain down. Picking is the next operation which involves the passing of the weft threads through the shed. The weft may be wound onto a shuttle to speed the process of weaving. Finally, beating involves the even packing of the weft threads with a comb-like structure or reed. These are the tools and materials used in weaving. This module will examine various basic weaves and weaving techniques. Cloth is usually woven on a loom, a device that holds the warp threads in place while filling threads are woven through them. A fabric that meets this definition of cloth can also be made using other methods, 
including tablet weaving, backstrap or other techniques without looms. The way the warp and filling threads interlace with each other is called the weave. The majority of woven products are created with one of the three basic weaves, plain weave, satin weave or twill weave. Plain weave, also called tabby weave or taffeta weave, is the most basic of three fundamental types of textile weaves. It is the simplest, common and inexpensive type of construction to produce which has a durable, flat and a tight surface. It is conductive to printing and other finishes. Balanced plain weaves are fabrics in which the warp and wefts are made of threads of the same weight and can be identified by its checkerboard-like appearance. It is also known as one up, one down weave or over and under pattern. Each weft yarn goes alternately over and under one warp yarn. Some examples of plain weave fabrics are crepe, taffeta, organdy, organza and muslin. The plain weave may also have variations like the following. Rib effect is produced by using coarser yarns in the filling direction or by more warp than filling yarns per inch. Some examples of rib weave fabric are bengaline, ottoman, fail, poplin, broadcloth and taffeta. Basket weave is constructed by treating two or more yarns in the warp or weft or both the directions and interlacing them in plain weave. It is not as balanced as plain weave and has more yarn slippage and shrinks easily. Some examples are Oxford cloth, monk's cloth, flat duck, hop sack and panama. Twill weaves are the weaves that find a wide range of applications. They can be constructed in a variety of ways and have many variations. The main feature of this weave structure are pronounced diagonal parallel lines that run along the width of the fabric and distinguish it from other types of weaves. In a twill weave, each weft or filling yarn floats across the warp yarns in a progression of interlacings to the right or left, forming a distinct diagonal line. This diagonal line is also known as a whale. A float is the portion of a yarn that crosses over two or more yarns from the opposite direction. Twill weave can be identified by its diagonal lines. This is 2 by 2 twill with two warp threads crossing every two weft threads. A twill weave is the second most basic weave that can be made on a fairly simple loom. Twill weave is often designated as a fraction such as 2 by 2 in which the numerator indicates the number of threads that are raised as given in the example and the denominator indicates the number of threads that are lowered when a filling yarn is inserted. The fraction 2 by 2 would be read as 2 up, 2 down. These are some examples of variations of twill weave. Right hand twill. In this twill, the diagonals run upwards to the right. Left hand twill. In this twill, the diagonals run upwards to the left. In the balanced twill, the same number of warp passes over filling yarns. It is reversible like 2 by 2 or 4 by 4. The unbalanced twill has an uneven number of warp or filling yarn. It has a right or wrong side. The denim broken twill combines right or left hand twills. In the herringbone twill, a series of inverted V's are formed resembling the backbone of the herringbone fish. These are commonly used in suiting fabrics. Twill angles are according to the angles of the diagonal line. Regular twill has 45 degree angle. Reclining twill has smaller angles. Steep twill has larger angles. 
Examples of this twill are denim, herringbone and houndstooth. Other twills are zigzag, pointed or wavy twills. Twills are also described as warp and weft faced twills. Satin and sateen both terms refer to fabric names and weave structures. Satin is a weave that typically has a glossy surface and a dull back. This weave is characterized by four or more fill or weft yarns floating over a warp yarn or vice versa, that is four warp yarns floating over a single weft yarn. Floats are mist interlacings where the warp yarn lies on top of the weft in a warp face satin and where the weft yarn lies on top of the warp yarns in weft face satins. Unlike in other weaves, the floats explain the even sheen and the reflection of light from the surface. Satin is usually a warp faced weaving technique in which warp yarns are floated over weft yarns although there are weft face satins also known as sateen. Each warp or filling yarn floats over four filling or warp yarns and interlaces with fifth filling warp yarn with progression of interlacings by two to the right or left. Satin weaves are based on intervals of interlacement for their construction of four end satin, five end satin, seven end satin, 8 end satin to 22 end satin. The interlacing float over 3, 4 or more than 4 yarns before a single interlacing and are denoted by 4 by 1, 7 by 1 or 11 by 1 etc. A satin fabric tends to have a high luster due to the high number of floats on the fabric. Due to this, satin is commonly used in apparel. Satin baseball jackets, athletic shorts, women's lingerie, nightgowns, blouses, evening gowns, also in men's boxers shorts, briefs, shirts and neckties. It is also used in the production of pointed shoes for use in ballet. Other uses include interior furnishing fabrics, upholstery and bed sheets. In this module, you will learn about different weaving techniques. There are two important weaving techniques, card weaving and frame weaving technique. We will look at each of these in detail. Card weaving can be done on square, rectangular or circular cards. Any size or type of card which is strong and thick enough to take the tension of threads without bending can be used. The board needs to be prepared before beginning to weave. The method for preparing the cards for weaving is to wind warp threads across both sides of the card or on a single side of the card. The requirements for card weaving are a strong piece of cardboard or plywood, a needle shuttle to carry the weft yarns, yarns, ribbons or any other threads, scissors or a cutter and a ruler. These are the card weaving steps. First, cut a piece of cardboard to required size and mark and cut evenly spaced slits at top and bottom. Next, fasten warp yarn at the back of the card with adhesive tape and pass through first slit. Carry the yarn up across the card, bringing it through the opposite slit, then warp it around the back of the card and bring, bring up through second slit. Repeat the step, fastening warp yarn at back with adhesive tape. The warp threads can also be wrapped around the tongues formed by the slits instead of around the back of the card. To do this, follow the steps. Take the yarn up through the first slit, wrap it around the tongue of the card and back through the second slit. Continue until one side of card is covered with threads. The back 
of the card will show short horizontal threads behind alternate tongues. While weaving on cards, the warp threads are attached to the card and the weft threads are then woven into them from either right or left or left to right. Using a weaving needle and starting from either right or left, darn the weft threads under and over the warp threads. Using the blunt end of the needle, push the threads together to ensure that they are right. After completing the woven fabric, the piece is removed from the card and the loose strands are woven back into the fabric for finishing by pushing them back with the help of the needle. If the weft thread were coarse or thick, it would be preferable to introduce a new weft from the opposite side to the one where the previous weft had ended. If the thread is thinner, then the new weft could be inserted from the same side, leaving about 3 fourths of an inch of both the old and new weft yarns at the edge of the card, tuck loose strands of the old weft over next pick to ensure to secure them. Weaving the weft threads too tightly across would cause the warp threads to pull toward the center and the edges inwards. The insertion of the weft may be done continuously in order as the weave repeat. Followed by card weaving, one of the next simplest form of weaving is frame weaving. During frame weaving, the warp yarns are wound onto nails at each end of the frame and the weft is woven with a shuttle. A wide range of fabrics can be woven with frame such as plain or tabby weaving and tapestry weaving. However, the length and width of the woven fabric is dependent upon the size of the frame. The requirements for frame weaving are a strong piece of wooden frame, a shuttle stick to carry the weft yarns, a shed stick, nails, yarns, ribbons or any other threads, scissors or cutter and a ruler. This band displays the weaving techniques. Before starting to weave, the warp must be prepared. This is achieved by wrapping the yarn around the inner rows of nails. The outer row of the nails would be used into if a finer warp were required. First, fasten the first yarn by securely tying one end of warp yarn to the first nail. Next, wrap the warp yarn around the opposite nail from left to right. Pass the yarn around the second nail at the bottom from left to right. Continue along the width of the frame. It is very important that the tension on the warp must be even throughout the warp. Fasten the yarn to the last nail at the bottom. Finally, the shed stick needs to be woven by passing it alternately over and under one pair of warp threads. This is the prepared warp on the frame. The insertion of weft may be done continuously in the order as the weave repeat. These are the steps for the weaving process. To begin weaving, turn the shed stick on its side and insert the shuttle from any one side, leaving about 2 to 3 inches of the yarn loose on the side of the warp. Flatten the shed stick back to its original position and use it to push the inserted weft to the front of the frame. Before the insertion of the next weft, tuck the loose strand of the weft over next pick to secure it. Insert the next weft or pick by darning the shuttle in and out through the alternate warp ends. Push the inserted second weft into place with the help of shed stick. Continue weaving in the same manner by repeating steps 1 to 3. The insertion of the weft may be done continuously in the order as the weave repeat. For finishing of the woven fabric, 
the woven piece is first removed from the frame by either unhooking it or by cutting the warp yarn at each end. Each loose yarn or thread is then woven into the fabric with the help of a darning needle by pushing the needle into the fabric and drawing the yarn with it. This would hide the loose strands in the fabric. A new color can be introduced during the course of weaving at any point by adding a new weft in the second shuttle stick. Care must be taken to interlock those loose strands at the edges. This would ensure neat edges and an effortless weaving process. To summarize, in this unit you have learned the technique of weaving. In particular, you have learned about the materials and tools used in weaving and seen examples of, of weaving techniques. Thank you.